Hi, welcome to my review of the Dave Smith Profit Rev 2 and the Profit 6. I did have the Profit 08 and I sold it when I bought the Profit 6. I sort of fell in love with the new the new, uh, the new synth and having the effects on it and stuff. It just sort of instantly sounded much better and much easier to get nice sounds from. But more recently, I've missed having the extra LFOs and the extra uh, envelopes and stuff. So um, I saw one of these, sort of deal on it. This is the 8 voice version. Um, so it's quite cheap. It's about half the price of this. Um, and really, for the extra thousand pound, I could you know go and buy other stuff. So I do have an OB6, so I've got some of the functions like the cross mod, which is the same as the poly mod that you have on this. So I really don't need three. Um, but do I keep the Profit 6 or do I keep the, the Rev 2? Okay, let's start off as I normally do looking at a sawtooth, just to listen to the sounds. So well the initialized patch on both of them is um, a sawtooth, single oscillator, uh, no sub. Uh, filter cut off completely open um, on this to create a initialized patch preset and right on this at uh, up and down and hold and straight away you can hear they're different can't you in my headphones earlier on I couldn't hear any difference at all they sounded exactly the same which I think when I did the Pro 8 versus Profit 6 video um, I had my headphones on when I was doing that and they sound so much similar in the headphones but through the sort of nice studio speakers, I can hear a difference. Now they're both exactly in tune, I've got the tuners up. But this one sounds darker, and then this sounds a little bit brighter. Which sort of surprised me in a way, because a lot of people say this sounds um, richer, but just on the single oscillator, this sounds fuller to me. That sounds more open. And I think that's the filters straight away you hear in here as well. Um, if you look at the oscillators. They're both pretty good sawtooth. So I don't think the shape of the oscillator and the wave shape is actually what's affecting this. I think it's the filter. And as you play with the filter, what you notice is that if you're trying to make the sound of the filter with your mouth. You're trying to make an E sound with this. So your mouth is spreading more outways. And with this, it's more of an O shape. An odd way of thinking about it, but if you're trying to recreate the sound yourself, you are, you know, you're changing the shape of your mouth, which is changing the shape of the filter, really. Uh, if we look at the EQs on those, at the frequency analysis, So that goes all the way up to about 8K on that note. Same on that if we go higher. This seems to be going up a, another thousand hertz or so. So that drops off at 20. And that's still full on at 20, isn't it? So this is a bit brighter. Oh, odd, hold on a minute. I've just said this is duller, but at the higher end. That's more open. That is, that's, well, there you go, differences in filters. They do sound different. They do sound quite different, actually, more than I remember with the, with the Pro 8. And maybe because I'm recording these videos now through the speakers and I've taught myself to not talk and press the keys at the same time. I won't go through the oscillators and all the different sort of wave shapes on them, but this has, or maybe I will, just, just briefly. So this is play the sawtooth. Then you have a saw and triangle. So really interesting shapes happening here. Triangle. And a pulse. And you can modulate all of those using the LFO. So you can have one saw and triangle being modulated at one speed, another one, um, I don't know, a triangle or a sawtooth being modulated at another speed. So you get really interesting, interesting harmonics going on there. Um, with this, you have um, triangle through to sawtooth through to square. A 
and then the pulse width of the square or the pulse width of the pulse. So there you go. They've both got sync as well um, and they both tune in the same way which one of the most annoying things about this actually is the fact that um, there's there's no way of just, on the, on the Pro Weight you could just go up or down, whatever, whatever parameter you were tweaking. On this you can't do that, so you've got to rely on these knobs, which is infuriating. Okay, now for the main event, the filters. I've got the initial patches up. And as I said earlier, you can sort of hear the difference in them already. This one's sounding louder. The issue I have when I'm playing with these is that Due to the resonance on this, knocking down the actual uh, volume, I'm constantly trying to tweak this to keep this even. This is much smoother from that perspective. So let's take a look at the frequency analysis of this. Comes to about 8K. That looks a little bit higher actually. Well, maybe it's exactly the same. I'm looking from across the studio, so it's difficult for me to see. This one sounds more open. This one sounds a little bit brighter to me. So there's definitely a difference in them. Um, huge difference is this. Watch the frequency analysis. Turn it up, drops in volume. Your mini Moogs do that, your ladder filters, standard ladder filters. So it's not unusual. But it is a big difference because this doesn't do it. So I've got to turn it up. Does this one sounds so much louder. Sounds brighter that doesn't it? It sounds more lively I think. That sounds a little dull in comparison. Let's then um, let's just have a little bit of a resonance sweep. So turn resonance up. Do the same here. So there's definitely two different tones in there, aren't there? Okay, this has got a high pass. I'll just show you that quickly. It's resonance, but not self-resonant. This doesn't have that, but it does have it on an effect. So let's put the effect on. High pass filter. Resonance up. So this will go up as high as this on just over 50%. That's maximum. But you know, it's it's good enough for, for a little high pass. I, I've got to admit, I don't use high pass that much on most sounds. Um, I do on the MS-20 because it's got the self-resonant filter, so it makes a big difference. Does mean you can get those nice little tones there.
So you're getting similar, similar sort of effects. But obviously with this, as I say, uh, if you've got the high pass filter plus two effect on this, you use a high pass filter, you've used your effect. It does have two sounds you can use, that's split or stack, um, and it has an effect pair um, sound. But it would be better if, if you're not using the B section, if we could update this somehow so you can use two effects on one, it would be nicer. Um, and I don't see why that's not doable, but then again, I'm not programming it, am I? Next thing I thought, well, this is VCO, this is DCO. So let's just take a look at um, at how the notes sort of drift maybe. So let's play, I don't know, um, a C major. In fact, no, let's just do two notes at once to start. So you can see on the frequency analysis there that there is movement in that. They're not, they're not you know, fixed. So let's try that on this. Again, movement, you can hear that wah 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 wah, and you can see those two spikes moving around 800 and 1500. It's the 800 one you can hear. Let's hear, see this one. It's going wah 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 wah, so that's moving, this is moving. Try a bit lower. See that around 400 hertz doing the same thing. And all those little spikes at the top wobbling up and down. Now I really can't understand why people say this sounds richer and fuller as a VCO. I, it, it, they sound different, but I don't think this one's sounding fuller. If anything, I'd say this one sounds fuller. So that's um, a peculiarity to note from, from the off. Let's put a bit of slop in there. Let's put two notes on. Do the same here. You can hear they work in slightly different actually. And one of my complaints with the Pro 8 was that it didn't go sloppy enough. Um, why couldn't they just update the operating system? And apparently they work in different ways, and actually you can hear them working in different ways or sounding slightly different at least. If I turn it all the way up, we'll see that the, it'll, it'll be obvious from the frequency analysis that the, the, the uh, frequencies drift. Especially look at the low end, so try that up here. So at the minute they're going up and they were going down, I think. One of them's going up, one of them's staying the same, this was both going up. And when you play around with it and you carry on doing that, they start going down, they start drifting left, you know, going one going up, one going down. So it's really clever the way it works. So this does have a modulation section as does this. Uh, the poly mod on this is sort of based on the, on the Profit 5. So you, with a filter envelope or oscillator 2 can modulate five destinations. So let's just show you that quickly. Let's get the initial patch up. Let's... Um, So that's this sort of classic FM sound, modulating frequency uh, of oscillator one with oscillator two. Put that on a low frequency. And as each of the oscillators is playing um, at a different speed, when you're on the low frequency, for example, eight, it sounds like eight individual LFOs, or six individual LFOs, I should say. All running at different
different speeds there. On this you've got eight modulation slots, each with 22 potential sources and 53 destinations. You sort of click modulation slot, you select the source here, and then destination, you just twist the knob as you do with the, with the LFO. So again, huge amount of flexibility on the modulation capabilities of this as compared to this. Although this doing these FM sounds, let's get the FM sounds up. Really simple to do. If we wanted to do something similar to the FM on there, uh, what, how would we do it on this? We use this, what's called this audio mod. So the audio mod modulates the cutoff with oscillator one, I think. So you whack the audio mod up, put the resonance up. So it's similar to, but I don't think it's quite as, it's not quite as crunchy, it's a bit softer this. But it's doable. Also the LFOs on this are really quite quick as well, so you can do um, almost audio rate stuff. I'm not sure how fast they are, but let me just knock that off a second. LFO one again on the cutoff amount. So you know, not bad. So let's look at it on that. You know, all right. quite the same but you know you're getting the similar sort of tones from it yeah so what made me sort of want to have a little go on the rev 2 is that I, there was patches like that that i couldn't make on this although there's plenty of other stuff you can do but this is a patch that um i had on my pro 8 i loved it <laughs> i have not used it in anything yet But that will definitely make the basis of a track at some point. But there's so many L I think there's four LFOs running in that. And I just as I was playing with this, I thought I'll just I'll just bring it in a bit more gradually or I'll bring the LFO in gradually. So you can use the this uses the auxiliary envelope to bring in one of the one of the LFOs um, gradually after a delay. Um, these start on the key sync, so as soon as you push. Some of them do, um, that one doesn't, that one does, that one doesn't, that one does. Some of them are synced to the clock, some of them are synced to the keys, so the LFO starts as soon as you hit. So every time you press it, it builds. So you've got one modulation there using the cut, we've got two, one, one on the cutoff doing quickly, a nice, nice high frequency, and one on a sort of much lower frequency over 32 steps. This hasn't got a hope of doing that. Uh, and I'm just missing tweaking, sitting there tweaking. Um, I've tried doing similar things to this on the Access Virus, but it just doesn't sound as nice. That's nothing against the virus. It just doesn't, doesn't do that. I don't think the LFOs go fast enough or something. But I do like the virus, but not for this sort of thing. Okay, to keep on the sort of this richness theme, let's make um, a simple pad sound.
Okay, from pads, let's move to a uh, bass. Just back to square one. Okay, so it's single oscillator at the moment. So we'll add the oscillator here. You can hear it drop in volume as it mixes from one to two. Add the sawtooth from oscillator two. Detune it slightly. Add some sub. Drop the cut off. Add envelope, envelope amount. Increase decay. So same over here. Add the second oscillator. It's a triangle, so just detune it slightly. Add the sub. Cut off down, envelope amount up, bit of decay. I think what can hear here is this uh, pulse on this, sorry, the sub is a pulse, and I think it sits in with the bass tone a bit better actually. That acts more like literally a sub, just sort of a, a nice sort of undertone to it, but it sounds like it sits under the sound rather than in it. And that's so much louder again, it's this whole volume aspect of things. So I don't know which one um, you'd prefer there, I think I'm liking this one more. And what I'm trying to show here is just how quick it is to set up the sounds. The Profitix always being quicker. It's a bit, it's a bit more difficult to set up sounds on this because there's so much flexibility. I think in the resonance and the cut off. You know, you've got um, the resonance kicks in a lot earlier on this. So the sweet spot is is a lot harder to find on this one. Let's add some resonance. So it starts squelching here at about just after one o'clock. And it starts in squelching here um, around 10 o'clock. So it comes in a lot earlier, as I've said before. And this one sounds so much louder. So that's as, that's as loud as this will go. Let's make it less squelchy. Is this slightly more detuned down here? But it's easier to set up on that one, isn't it? Let's knock it into a, just a single oscillator again, just to hear what that sounds like. I can, this one's just sounding a little bit snappier, isn't it? And I'm not sure why, because the decay sounds about the same. And I think it's when I turn the resonance up on this, as I, as I showed when I looked at the filters, when you turn the resonance up slightly on this, what you tend to get is that little lift in the higher frequencies, and I think it makes it gives it a little bit more bite. So it's not the cutoff, and it's not the envelope amount, because they're both on full. Knock the resonance off. It's got more of a rough tone as well, this. I mean, they're both nice. I think I prefer this one. And when it comes to a mix in this instance, I say a lot of the time that when it comes to a mix, it's you can get away with it. I think with something like this, like that would be like, Quite, um, quite loud in the mix, wouldn't it? Be quite a prominent part. Although playing them a few more times now, I'm thinking, oh, this sounds a bit rougher and a bit. 
Is that a little bit too refined maybe? So again, I don't think one's better than the other. Changing my mind as a talk, aren't I? At the second oscillator, so I'll have to turn this one down slightly. Let's take a look at some other programs that I've tried to emulate, if we go. Um, this spinning this round for hours is just a pain. So just trying to match up, you know, does it sound as nice? And I'm talking the simple patches here, so. That's a preset in this, but it's one of Jews, one I quite like. resonance on this one isn't there in a track that'd be fine so here's another patch this is one I made on this that I've matched on here very similar in a track, I'd get them to match specifically to the track um, as, as far as I could. I think there's an effect on that as well. It's got two, has it? Let's take off what we've got on here. So let's take the delay off. So if that's got two effects on. This has only got one, so I've taken one off. Yeah, it's got a slightly different um, envelope and stuff, but without matching them absolutely identically, with, which can take hours, you know. Here's another one. Um, something I'd made on that, simple sound. That actually sounds a bit more ballsy, doesn't it? But nothing you couldn't tweak with EQ. Again, in a track. Happy with them. That sounds a bit punchier. But if soft is what you want, that's better. On this sound. Here's another one. Something I've made on this and I've used in things. And as I say, it is about sounds that I use. Can I live without this? I think I can. I don't want to get rid of it. I really do like it. And I do like the sounds of the filter. But for the extra thousand pound, what this does. So, <laughs> this is sort of a brief, ah, I'm, I'm confused myself. I do have the OB6, so I can do the polymod stuff on the OB6. Um, I can get very similar sounds from that as I can on this. For some things, obviously the filter is completely different. But for the rest of it, this, although it doesn't sound the same, I wouldn't say it sounds any worse, it just sounds different. There's different tone to the, to, the, to the filter. I know a lot of people don't like the Curtis filters. Um, I'm not sure, it, I think it is a bit harsher than this. This is nice and soft and smooth. The resonance comes in very early on this, uh, you know, and this one just feels nicer and easier to make the sounds on, but this can make the sounds near enough. So five big analog polys, plus the access virus, plus whatever I've got on soft synths. Oh no, I've got the, um, the, the Waldorf Wave XT as well, so six big analog. Well, that's not analog, is it? Um, 
but six big polys do I need them obviously not so which ones do which ones you keep and which do you get rid of So after looking at this, what do I think? Am I going to keep this or am I going to keep this? And actually it's all come down, nothing to do with the sound, nothing to do with the fact that this has got all the different modulation, um, the different wave shapes on the oscillators, the additional envelope, the delay on the envelopes, the 53 uh, modulation destinations, the 22 modulation sources. This on paper is better than this. This I think sounds better than that. I can get away with that. I would rather keep this than this, actually, to be honest, but this is the second one of these I've had to demo. Um, one thing I've noticed with this one, this is actually going back because it's got, a, got an error in the second oscillator. If I go to this, you listen to one of the voices. So it, it, it's doing that on voice eight um, on different places on the keyboard, so. And on this one, I'm getting bleed through one of the voices. You probably can't hear it on the, on the video, but in the studio, it's there, it's loud. And when I turn the studio on at the minute to do this, this video, turn both these synths on, turn the mixer on, turn the computer on, and what's that noise? There's a strange noise, and it's this. Um, I've recalibrated it twice now, uh, and it's still coming through, so it's, that's going back. I'd rather keep this, it makes more sense. But I've had two now, and... Um, both have had a problem with the oscillator and my concern would, would definitely be that in 12 months time when the warranty is out of date, something happens with this uh, and then I'd be kicking myself for not keeping that. So yeah, it's all come down to um, quality control really. Shouldn't have left the factory with that, that issue. Of the new Mini Moog, and I'm on my second one of them, I had a problem with the LFO on the first one. I'm on my third Sub-37, and I'm, I've gone through two of these. So, cost or price or whatever you'd say, the, the value of the equipment really doesn't count for much. I don't, you know, it's, it's annoying that this day and age, I'm getting these synths that, like the Moog's, what, over £3,000. This is uh, £1,300. Uh, the Sub-37 was £1,500 or whatever, however much they were. And I've had to replace all of them. So that's um, a damning indictment, I think, on, on manufacturing these days. You'd think it'd be getting better, wouldn't you? But, uh, but obviously not. So yeah, so I'm keeping this one. That's going back. I wish I could keep that one. It's the more sensible one to have. It's a lot more flexible. I can get pretty much the sounds I can get from that. You know, um, what a shame. What a shame. And I hope that's been of some use to somebody somewhere. Um, particularly if you're looking at buying one of these. Just really be careful when you pick it up, make sure you go through each of the oscillators individually, each of the sound sounds individually, sort of each of the wave shapes individually, and have a little listen for the bleed and make sure that across the keyboard, the cutoff's working as it should, because they're the issues I've had with it, so. Good luck.